Hey, what's going on? Welcome to a very special edition of Sets and Reps. This is Nerd Splurge. Every five episodes, I will be sitting down with my lifelong friend, Joshua Hartling, and we will be letting our inner nerds break open to the surface. Today, we sat down with two separate storylines from the DC Comics publications, and we gave our three likes and our three dislikes about those stories. And not only did we do that, we also summarized the basic plot and just in general uh, appreciate each other's appreciation for the stories. And at the end of the podcast, we do a friendship quiz of our own design where we came up with three questions to ask each other uh, to see how well we know each other. So every five episodes, we're going to be doing some variation of this episode where we will be discussing a storyline in some form. I encourage you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this special first edition episode of Nerd Splurge. Thank you. Joshua Hartling, I have, I have you're my guest today, and I've known you since first grade, and I can't say that a lot about my friends. So I want to give you a very, very warm welcome to Sets and Reps. How are you this morning? I'm doing very well, thank you, Greg. It is an honor to be here, and it's an on you, uh, honor to know you for more years than I can count. Uh, makes me feel old, but in a good way. Old, but in a good way. Isn't that yeah. the goal? That's that the goal the in goal. life. Uh, uh, getting older beats the alternative. That's right. Sure. Getting younger. That would be weird. There's a movie about that called uh, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, where I think a man is born an old man, and then he, throughout life, he ate, he like de-ages and goes yeah, backwards. Yeah, that's weird. I've never seen yeah. that movie, and I don't think I want to. No. Nah. Although there is like scientific evidence that as you get older, eventually you start to revert back to like being a baby. Yeah, I mean it starts with your your body and your height. I think your posture. You start to shrink. Over time you shrink, your body tightens up, and then you you. But even just like your mentality starts to become more baby like as you get older, as you start like, um, just like the way you. Think. Yeah. Exactly. You can be unable to process things. I'm actually learning. I'm learning a lot about that in school. We're, we're, one of my classes, clinical conditions, we're just learning about some of the brain um, issues that happen, like, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's. And that's a, that's a sad topic that we're not going to get into too much. But yes, do start to revert back to your childlike ways. But one thing, one thing about my childhood that I don't think I'll ever give up is my love and appreciation for comics and superheroes mm -hmm. and uh it's been one crazy year i'd say um and a really good thing about reality is that you can escape from it sometimes yeah into comic book worlds and that's something that me and you especially have been into for a long time now i'd say yeah um so this is this this episode here what we're gonna do is we've chosen two different stories that uh we both i think i think we've both read them before but we've, we've chosen to reread them and this is an episode i'd like to this is a, something i'd like to do with you every five episodes so okay. Every five episodes, me and Josh Hartling will, will meet up again and we'll, we'll choose a new storyline. And what we're going to do is talk about three things we like about it and three things we dislike about it. And it, my, originally, I was going to do five likes and five dislikes, but the book that I have today uh, is just so uh, inspiring and it's, it's pretty it's pretty amazing to say the least so it was hard for me to come up with five things i disliked about it so i shortened that list and i came up with 
three things that I just like about it. <laughs> hmm. um, how do you feel about the book that you read for today? The book I read today, um, this may become one of my new favorites, to be honest. It was very well written. Um, I don't want to get too much into it till we get to the, the three likes and dislikes, but sure. the book I read was here is called Identity Crisis. It's kind of a famous one. And which uh, right which uh, which publication came out with this? This is a DC comic, so it follows the Justice League of America it's back in the the Bronze Era. So, uh, oh, that's interesting. Like nineties. So that's, that's before the New Fifty Two, right? Yep. So, like, if any of you ever watched like the Justice League animated show growing up, this is kind of similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, that this would be the era that the Justice League animated show was based off of. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, personally, that's I think you got me into those shows originally. We started with the animated series, uh, the Batman the Animated Series. I don't remember if you got me into that one or if we both just liked it at the same time, but I know that you definitely showed me Justice League and then eventually Justice League Unlimited. But yeah, yes. these uh, we can really nerd out when it comes to these topics. But I think that DC, in terms to Marvel, DC has a much better catalog of animated films than and animated yes. shows than the Marvel yes. comics does, for sure. Marvel wins out in the live actions, but DC tends to win out in the animated shows. As a general rule, not not solid fact, but general rule. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take turns. Um, okay. First, I want to start off by um, each giving like a, like a rundown of what our book was about just like a yep. quick plot overview right i figured yep. that was appropriate um and i'll start us off okay and then you can okay. go after me so my book was uh blackest night and this one was it ha had like a mixture of emotions throughout the whole thing and it, and it starts off like in a very uh, dark place and what's what's kind of happened um is that a lot of characters in the DC universe have died? Uh, they've been they've been killed, right? Mm. Um, for various storylines, uh, this this one in particular, um, it's kind of it's it's not really mentioned what time period it is, and it's it's hard to relate it to any other major events that have been going on, but. I believe that this story was written in the new 52 and it's right before uh, the whole DC rebirth, which was kind of their newest, uh, the newest retcon in 2019, right? That's when yeah. the rebirth came about. Um, so this, I believe, happened right before that. So all these heroes are, are, are dead and what's starting to happen is that they're coming to life and i know that you and i are both big fans of the green lantern core and all of the different lanterns are featured in this novel mm -hmm. and uh, including a new lantern which is the black lantern core and so these yeah so what's happening is all of these different characters are being summoned out of death by the Black Lantern Corps. Um, similarly, how the Green Power Ring will choose its new uh, warrior. This Black Lantern Ring goes around and seeks out the, the bodies of these fallen people. So the story bases around the main Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and mm -hmm. the Flash... Uh, Barry, actually, it might be Wally West. Flash. Um, they're trying Should to be Barry Allen at this point. Let me check, actually, real quick. So, one of yeah. So, it is Barry. You're right. It's definitely Barry. Um, and so the story kind of starts off, and they're just talking about different, you know, reminiscing together mm. uh, of, about all the people that that have passed away. And I think. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, this is kind of when Hal Jordan had disappeared for a, a long time. I think maybe mm -hmm. at this point he became 
uh, Parallax, and Parallax was he became Parallax. Yep, and then he became the Spectre for a while. Yes. Yeah. So this might. So I think that Barry is telling him about all the people that that uh, passed away during his absence. So things start to take a dark turn when uh, one of the guardians of the Green Lantern Corps is corrupted by the dark, by the Black Lanterns, and he kind of turns on the rest of the Guardians and uh, takes them out. And so you have all these heroes that we know and love that were dead, and now they're coming to life again. And it's not, it's not that they're coming to life again, but it's almost like the Black Lantern rings are using them as like vehicles to to do their dirty work, right? To and and the goal is to just take over the world and 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 get all of these creatures together and just defeat the light right the darkness here is really just trying to defeat any kind of hope and uh and positivity and of course it wins it it it, it's not the case by the end of the story um things take a very positive turn towards the end of it and that's one of the reasons i really like the story so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk a lot more about that um so yeah. Tell All me right. a bit, and and this 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 was written by. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go over who wrote it. It's Joff Johns is the writer. He's written a lot of DC stories. He's one of the um, biggest names, I think, in DC publications. And mm-hmm. I really love the art for this as well. I thought it was Jim Lee. Jim Lee is my favorite DC comic artist, uh, but it's actually someone named Ivan Reese. So. I thought that was interesting. It is. Okay. So I read Identity Crisis, which was written by Brad Meltzer and Rags Morales. Hmm. And uh, so comic books, if you ever delved into the world of comic books, are very convoluted. That's the first thing you should learn. And um, they're kind of like legends and the fact that they are kind of always changing and they're always different versions so at this point in time where identity crisis is barry allen flash and hal jordan green lantern are actually dead Mm. but as it is said no one stays dead in comic books except uncle ben which is why they come back later for (laughs) uh blackest night but this also deals with the fact that a lot of people have died and moved on and that, that's something I really like about this era of comic books is that you have these heroes who have died and there's kind of like been this passing on of the mantle, yeah. which I feel like in newer comics is something they've they kind of got away from and they just went back to all the originals, which I personally like like it when when something move, when the mantle moves on because it, it shows progression. And it's not a stagnant story. You mean like when a char- when a new character takes on the identity yeah. of the, new, the old character, yeah. Yeah. Um, but at this point in time, it, it starts with Elongated Man and I think Firehawk is her name. They're on a stakeout, and uh, Elongated Man is telling uh, Firehawk about how he met his wife uh, and kind of goes uh, just very emotional and uh how his wife sue dibney was a a critical part of the of his life and of the justice league's lives and how she was such a good friend to all of the original jla members and how she was even an honorary jla member Mm. Uh, but at the very beginning after that there is a huge scandal you might say um because Sue Dibney, his wife, is murdered right at the beginning. And instantly, all these alarms goes off. Um, there are these protocols that have been set in place that to alert different heroes in different orders. And you have the pretty much the best of the best going in to try and figure out, uh, instead of a crime scene, figure out what happened. You got Batman there and bring in all sorts of other heroes, like magic guys as well. Uh, and they're trying to all figure out what's going on. And the strange thing is, because she was a formal, former JLA member, or wife of a former JLA member, um, she has, like, the top-notch security. They made sure that, like, 
her her place is pretty much impregnable, but somehow someone still got in to kill her. Mm. And now elongated man had a public identity, which for DC is kind of unusual. Normally everyone has secret identities. But it starts this scare among the superheroes of, okay, are the people going to start targeting our loved ones now? And they're, they're, it shows a very emotional side of these heroes as they deal with the grief of losing someone so close to them, but also trying to, to make sure that they hold on to the ones they, they do love and don't let them go, uh, don't take them for granted which I think is a lesson for everybody, not just superheroes. Yeah, cool. right? If you haven't hugged your mom and dad today, I definitely think that you should. Mm. It's a good good thing to do because um, you're never guaranteed any any moment. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Anyways, go on. But going on, um, after Sue Debney's funeral, they all go, a lot of the superheroes kind of go on the, Almost a witch hunt, not quite, but they're, they're, they're trying to hunt down all these different suspects to try and figure out who did it. But there's a, a small group of former JLA members who they're pretty sure they knew know who do it did it. And um, they, they go after Dr. Light. But before they do, they're met by Wally West Flash and Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. And... Wally West and Kyle Rayner kind of get the sense that something's something's not quite right with this group. Like they're they're not like they they're not as open about it as they feel like they should be. And uh, as they're talking, they they kind of discover some dark secrets in the JLA's history, where the reason they think that this this particular group, uh, which is Green Lantern. Hawkman, Black Canary, uh, Elongated Man himself, and Satana. Uh, why they think it's Dr. Light is because I guess years ago, back when there was Barry Allen Flash and Hal Jordan Green Lantern, there had been an incident on the Watchtower where Dr. Light had broken in and actually attacked uh, it doesn't explicitly say, but I'm pretty sure he he raped Sue Debney, um, which is wow. pretty dark. Yeah, but um, the, these heroes who who got they they the seven group of seven of them got there back to the Watchtower and were able to stop Doctor Light, but uh, they were scared that he, he wouldn't stop that he wouldn't stop until he. Like he would just continue to specifically target their their loved ones and try and hurt them, and so they made the decision to alter Doctor Light's personality, which uh, using magic, which a lot of the mainstream JLA members would consider that a big no no and crossing a line. Interesting. And there there was a vote that was taken, and I guess it came out four to three to alter. Dr. Light's personality and uh, they did which is kind of a, a weird thing because Green Arrow is part of that situation and he he still allowed um, it to happen. So a lot of this not all of it but a lot of the story is told from Green Arrow's perspective mm. um, and he was a part of the scandal but he's normally one of the straight arrows. That's not something he normally would uh, allow and he he votes against it, but when you know we're talking about it all these years later, he's kind of defending it to to Wally West. It's also interesting how Barry Allen and Hal Jordan, the original Flash and Green Lantern, are the ones are, are part of this vote originally, a part of the scandal. Now that they have died, you have Wally West, Flash, and Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, kind of stepping in and trying to figure out what happened in their place. Yeah. That's cool. This it sounds it sounds like it's like this definitely takes place before my story. Yes, right? uh, uh, a long, a good while before. Yeah. Okay. Um. But they they go after Doctor Light, and it, it turns out not to be Doctor Light. They they got a few suspects that they they um they encounter, and it turns out not to be any of them. And uh, 
spoiler warning, we'll get to the to the end part now. But eventually, mm. they do find uh, out who it is. They perform an autopsy on Sue Debney's body, and at first, it looks like it was arson, like uh, her body was burned. But then they realized that she was actually killed before the fire, and um, they they find this uh, impression on her brain where someone or somehow um, blood flow stops getting to her brain and then they notice that the impression is actually footprints which leads them to believe that it's it's the atom or someone close to the atom someone who can go molecular and that's uh, interesting that ties in that ties in a little bit to my story yeah it's it's pretty crazy and so they they go to confront the atom well batman figures it out even before anyone else but it wasn't actually the atom who did it was his it was his ex-wife uh gene loring who uh still had access to one of the atom's suits and she used it to uh attack sue uh didn't mean to kill her killing was an accident but uh her her mentality is it it's kind of sad also i don't know how i feel about this i thought it was kind of dumb but kind of cool um she was trying to like get back with the atom that was the whole point of this she wanted to get back with ray palmer and gene, so she f- the what the gene, the ex- gene loring ex-wife. the one who attacked sue yeah, yeah. she if, she figured that if she attacked sue then all the superheroes would start caring more about their loved ones and that maybe that would send ray palmer back to her wow which I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. That's blurred. Lines are blurred yeah. a little bit there. Yeah. It also kind of implies that she was going crazy because she ends up in Arkham at the end of the story. Yes, Arkham Asylum is the uh, home for the criminally insane in Gotham City. Yes, and it is kind of an – insanity is kind of an overused trope in DC Comics, not going to lie. But yeah. uh, it still, still was a very interesting read. And it was good. I liked that it showed a lot of humanity in the the heroes. Uh, kind of when you when you if you first get into comics back in like the silver silver age, they're very actiony, but they don't have a lot of like character emotion to them. And that's something that the Bronze Age really tried to bring in. And they do that especially well. The Identity Crisis is kind of putting some humanity to these heroes and getting getting to know the people behind the mask and that they you know they have real struggles and real pains and just because they're superheroes doesn't mean it's any less than the normal persons yeah the writers do really well with that especially with the dialogue and how they have characters interact and what they say Hmm. and uh with the so many characters having been departed of this and having died it's cool to see uh, like like with Wally West confronting Green Arrow on this whole scandal he he's mad about it he wishes it hadn't happened but at the same time he is trying to preserve Barry Allen's legacy cuz that was someone who was a big mentor to him um, mm. and then there's a, a snapshot where you get to see Green Arrow meet up with Hal Jordan as the specter and they kind of have a cool conversation uh, because Hal Jordan knows who who it is because he is the specter of the hand of God, mm. but he's not allowed to divulge the information. Wow. But it's cool kind of to see the humanity there as they both like they were really good friends. They still are really good friends, but there's this pain that you know Hal Jordan knows and he can't tell Green Arrow, and Green Arrow is kind of mad about that. But it, it's more just it's this pain. Uh, it's something you don't always see in comic books. Yeah, for sure. Just again, just what you were saying, mm-hmm. people behind the mask, their true emotions, their true feelings. Yeah. Good. Is that one of your that's one of your likes, right? The humanity? Yes, that is probably my number one like from this book is just the the humanity you get to see behind the the masks in this. What about number two? Number two? Uh, honestly, I, I like how it's told from the perspective of Green Arrow a lot. Green Arrow is one of my favorite heroes, and I think it's very interesting having this guy who is very upright 
uh, tends to be very upright, tends to be very by the book. You know, he's, he, he's, he's the guy who doesn't kill. He doesn't cross the line. Right. But you see him in this position where he's still trying to cover up the scandal because he feels like that's that they made the right call in the situation, even though he didn't like the call. He thought it was the best call. Mm. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just interesting to see him struggle with that. A, a, a generally good man having done something wrong in a, in a no-win situation, really. He's got, uh, he's generally, isn't he portrayed as, uh, Green, Green Arrow, isn't he portrayed as just, like, being, like, very simple, like average guy. Like yeah. he, he's not. He, he does. It doesn't seem like he's. He's very much about the little given. man. Yeah. He's very. He's very much about protecting the guys on the streets. He's not really about uh, taking on the huge galactic uh, villains. I mean, he will if he has to, but mm -hmm. he he more likes to leave that to like Batman, Superman, and essentially he feels like a lot of the time. The you know the average person can get lost in the huge galactic events because it's comic books, so those happen all the time. <laughs> but uh, there's always some city getting attacked by aliens. Exactly. Uh, but he's very one of his traits is he's also very caring about um, just his fellow superheroes, his fellow soldiers, their friends. I don't know. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, and so that's it's cool to see. I also, I guess, also on that note, similar, it's cool to see Batman show a bit more emotion because mm. uh, he's someone who's normally considered very stoic, um, but as he gets older, oftentimes he is portrayed as getting a little softer, and that's something you see here. Is there, um, like he. He is sad. He he can relate to the loss because he knows what it's like to to lose somebody close to you. And yeah, there's absolutely. there's one really cool scene at the towards the end where he's actually at his parents' grave and he's asking them to take care of Sue Dibney and another fellow who died during the story. And wow. you just get to see some compassion from Batman, which he he he's classically one of the most compassionate characters who never shows it. So it's cool when you get to actually see him caring. Yeah, that's very cool. Hmm. I like that as well. All right. Tell me your last like, and then we're going to start talking about your dislikes. Of this my story. last like. Honestly, my last like for the story. Um, just at the end, they talk about having dinner with each other. Which, I uh, again, another thing that just shows their humanity is cool how you have, like, it's a few different cases, but you just got, like, several characters, these big superheroes just getting together just to have a meal. And I'm mm. like, that's so cool because, like, that's just something I would do with my friends. And it just shows that these guys, they're not just, they're not just, like, fighting together. They're also friends, and they really care about each other as individuals. And Awesome. You know, it, it's definitely, you know, forged by having fought together for so many years and having been through so much together. And a lot of them have experienced loss together. But it's um, it's a real friendship. It's not just a professional relationship. Good. So that's that's my third like. So for my dislikes... Um, it's hard and, to come up with them, right? <laughs> it's going to be hard to come up with them. I think the my major dislike here is just kind of the the twist at the end where it's Ray Palmer's the Adams wife, Jay Loring, uh, Jean Loring. Her whole motivation is to get Ray Palmer back. I thought was kind of silly, but at the same time, I also thought it showed her kind of another side of their humanity. So I don't know. Like, I don't know. I feel like maybe it could have been done better, mm. but at the same time, it wasn't the worst. I kind of, I kind of see the benefit of why they did it that way. Having uh, it, having it be the 
Yeah, the thing that you least ex- you you don't really expect. Yeah, yeah you would never expect her. Um, uh, having her go kind of insane at the end, I thought was kind of. It, it's a trope that, like I said, it's a trope that's overused in DC Comics. Um, yeah, insanity. So, um, it's a, it's, it's, a it's a calling for everyone to mm-hmm. take care of their mental health. <laughs> I yeah, which is important, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess my, the second complaint I have, which is something I generally have with comic books, is I feel like not enough people died. <laughs> uh, oh, it's wow. kind of dumb to say. You should have read my book. <laughs> yeah, I should have. Uh, but you have like this huge battle going on, and like pretty much everyone comes out pretty much okay like in the whole old book only two heroes die two heroes and one villain and um that's actually actually come to think of it i think all these people stay dead because that's one of my biggest complaints with comic books is they kill off people and then they bring them back to life um so maybe that isn't actually a dislike Contradicting yourself, are we? Uh, maybe no, I am. Kidding. I think I might be actually. That's uh, all right. When I was making my list, I was, I, I was coming up with like the same reactions to things because mm-hmm. like you can dislike something about it, but then it, you can think on it a little more and then realize that oh, it kind of moves the story along in a in an interesting way, or it, it yeah, you know, like there's a point to it even if you don't really like it at first. Um, I guess my, my third dislike, though, is that they have this huge scandal in it that they talk about, um, and it's Wally West and Green and Green Arrow talk about it a lot and kind of struggle over it, but there's never really any consequences for the scandal. Like, it's never brought to light to, like, Batman, Superman, or anyone. Like, there's never... I feel like there aren't really any consequences for their actions of altering Dr. Light's personality. It was just, they did it, they covered it up. Wally West and Kyle Rayner find out about it, but they also cover it up. And so it's never really, I feel like it never really gets any good closure. Um, and maybe they do later on, but at least not in Identity Crisis proper. They they never deal with it more, which I I, I thought that was kind of lame, but. Wow. Yeah. That when it when it leaves it on a unfulfilled note. Right? Yeah. I, I don't maybe th- I know a lot of times in comic books they'll kind of leave loose ends so that they can tie them up later in other stories. So maybe that's kind of what they were going for. Because mm-hmm. they, they mentioned Batman having kind of an idea of this of uh, having an idea of knowing this happened. Um well, he so. knows everything, huh? I mean, yeah, he's he's Batman. He pretty much knows everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just they they didn't get resolution in this story, at least, which I I found kind of annoying. But I mean, on the whole, I really enjoyed this comic and was it is indeed one of the best ones I've I've read in a long while. Good. What's your rating? My rating. Okay. Hey, if zero out of ten. Yeah, I'm thinking an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Very good. This is an 8 out of 10. If, uh, yeah, this is definitely an 8 out of 10. So go read Infinity, uh, I'm sorry, Identity Identity Crisis Crisis everywhere where comic books are sold. Uh, it's a good one. It's a, you can buy it in a a single graphic novel. They got it all compact together. Mm. Um, it's, it is a famous one. It's a good read. Um. Not the, probably not the most famous. It's famous, not the most famous, but definitely a good read. And if you like to see the more human side of characters, I definitely suggest it for you. Very good. But Greg, right. tell us about uh, Blackest Night. I'm really interested to hear your, your take on this story and your likes and dislikes. All right. Well, let me get into that. Uh, the first thing I liked about this uh, story is kind of like, it's the opening. It's it's how it's how it begins. 
the intro mm -hmm. sequence. Um, it's very, has a lot of symbolism and it has like a lot of foreshadowing. And if you didn't read the story, I, I mean, I didn't notice it until like I came, I went back and I read it the second time. Um, but I found that it was really interesting. So it starts off, the story starts off and, and Batman is dead, right? Spoiler. Mm -hmm. um, and the very first few words of the comic are, there was darkness, then there was light, and the war between them began. And I found that that was like a really uh, interesting kind of uh, biblical symbolism there with mm. with this because it goes on to show you know the war that's happening between all of the different lanterns the different uh on the spectrum and it, it doesn't go into it a lot but it's just with the art it shows colors and it shows it's the story is from hal jordan's perspective and mm. he's he's talking about it um and then it, and it shows uh, an angel with like arms outstretched and it's uh, at the site of Bruce Wayne's grave. Hmm. And so I found that that was an interesting symbolism because it's kind of comparison. It, it's comparing like the death of Batman. Um, and then it shows like the angel with arms outstretched, uh, obviously like, Sim like similar to like the death of, of Jesus on the cross in, yeah. uh, in, in biblical times. And also they're at the, the site of his grave. And according to, you know, the story, uh, Jesus was resurrected. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of resurrecting <laughs> happening in this story. And, uh, and, and so it just makes you think of that if you've read it and then you come back to it. So and it's it's very hideous resurrection in this one, to mm. say the least. Um, another thing I liked about it is it takes not not too much about the story, but it's kind of about the art and how the art is developed. Um, yeah. One of one of the things I want to do later in life is I kind of want to take my art to another level and maybe even work for DC Comics myself. So I I notice things in the comics that maybe. I find that I, I struggle with and or, or art aspects of the art. I mean that I find that I don't do enough or I or I, I, str I struggle with. And what what's cool is that this has a lot of images with multiple characters thrown. It's kind of like pictures that take up the entire page, and those are really uh, important for like developing like the gravity of a situation like you have mm. a whole bunch of different characters um that that take up a whole page or a multitude of pages and it symbolizes like something significant in the story obviously is going on so I, like a couple examples of this there's uh two pages in the beginning where there's kind of there's like a funeral uh, like a massive memorial I guess you could say there's several memorials happening throughout the beginning of the story because a whole bunch of characters have passed. Um, and there's one particular part where there's like four or five green lanterns flying in. And um, obviously it's, it's our main lanterns. It's, it's Hal Jordan, it's Guy Gardner, Kyle Rayner, and Jon Stewart. And there's only four of them, but they take up the entire page and it's just all focused on them. And there's uh, military jets flying in the background and there's fireworks going off and it's just a really really vibrant picture and then you know there's also a part where Hal Jordan is talking to Barry Allen about all the people that died and there's another two pages that are taken up where he's just got a, a construct from the power ring right you know we, we know we know that Green Lantern's power is that he can create anything that he wills into existence with the power ring and he's just telling Barry Allen all of the people that died and everyone is just shown on this image and even the characters that are small are shown in great detail and I'll find one more example um, 
that's going to be like pretty significant is when you know there's there's one part of the story where a whole bunch of uh it it goes to the watchtower this is kind of like middle middle of the story barry and how are realizing that a whole bunch of people are coming back from the dead and um they're they're still trying to get crowd control and like figure out what's going on but they're in the watchtower and the watchtower has like a, a med bay uh, mm-hmm. or or like a morgue where they keep all of their dead and like yeah fallen heroes yeah and so um the like you know the black lantern ring kind of uh possesses firestorm the the dead uh, yeah firestorm has come back to life and he kind of facilitates the rising of all of these dead heroes in the watchtower so there's just an, another scene with just everyone coming out of their uh encapsulations and it's just it's gruesome and it's as many of them and um everyone's depicted as like dark and coming back to life so uh, that, that was that was kind of cool just again just the large image with multiple characters shown um and then the third thing that i like is sort of towards the end uh in the final battle there you know there's a point where all of the characters are being chosen by the different lantern core they're yes, try- they're try- yeah yeah they're trying to figure out how to stop uh the big bad necron yeah, and I, and I don't recall if he's uh, a new character or if he's someone in the past that they brought back to life. Um, yeah. But he's got he he's uh, being powered by this by the the Black Lantern, the actual Lantern that yeah. And they're trying to figure out how to how to destroy the Lantern and then in turn destroy him. And what happens is that there's an entity of white light that necron wants to destroy mm-hmm. and because he knows that um the white light is like the thing that's gonna you know that's gonna foil his his uh plan to to have everyone be taken over by the black ring so he's trying to destroy it and what happens is that sinestro he's a yellow lantern he's prideful mm-hmm. he wants to what he's doing while the entity is being destroyed he's like i'm i'm done with this i'm gonna stop this i'm gonna try to you know i'm gonna try to (laughs) fix this um on his own yeah because how because how at this point all of the lanterns are uh together the different ones they're working together which is also kind of cool i I had that in my larger list but i had to get rid of it Mm -hmm. um the green lantern the yellow lanterns the indigo tribe the red lanterns they're all working together because they have a common enemy now that's trying to destroy the earth um the galaxy even right galaxy yeah so sinestro becomes a white lantern by taking by by uh by throwing himself into this white energy but it it's fine it's found that it's not enough like he's not powerful enough to to stop necron even necron finds a way to uh take the power away from him so what ends up happening is that everyone all of the characters end up trying to uh send their all of the different lanterns try and end up like sending sending their light into this entity and so they basically all become white lanterns so that's that's and that facilitates the end of the story because what they do as they start as the white lanterns the light ends up severing the connection between the black lanterns and all of their hosts that they've taken over ah yeah so all of the people that were dead end up coming back to life and throughout the entire story whenever the black lantern ring takes over a new host you can just see a little uh speech bubble and it just says rise 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 um you know ray palmer rise sue dibney rise all these characters 
But at the end of it, when the white light starts taking over and brings everybody back to life, it says... Boy, did, does, does the White Lantern bring Sue Dibney back to life? Yeah. Because she, she dies in Identity Crisis. That's what I was saying, that that um, that, uh, that it was tied into the story a little bit. That's kind of cool. And when, when those characters come back, they try to... It's weird. They again it's not the real person it's just the black lantern but they know what went on in this person's past so they mm. speak to the person who's already alive and they try to and they try to make them feel guilty about what's happening as they as they kill them and eat them you know so it's just pretty mm. interesting um but yeah then when the white lantern kind of takes over everything it says live and that's different yeah. from rise so yeah um everything kind of ends up good in the end in that way. Um, so the dis the dislikes that I had were a few different uh, sequences that took place throughout the story. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of them are kind of just, like I said, those sequences. So one part is like, there's, there's one point where Aquaman, right? Aquaman has died and He's been buried in the earth versus being buried in Atlantis. And okay. um, Queen Mera, who is Aquaman's wife, mm -hmm. and uh, Garth, who is, uh, I, don't, I don't, he's not Aqua Boy, but um, do you remember his name? I don't know. Aqua Lad? Aqua Lad, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Um, they're at the grave site of Arthur Curry, Aquaman, and he, at this point, is risen. So, he's come back and, while they're there. And yeah. what? And, and they've got a bunch of sh a soldiers, a few soldiers from Atlantis, too. And I think Aquaman and Garth's girlfriend also. Garth's girlfriend comes back to life, too. Mm -hmm. And, uh what Aquaman does is he calls upon the sea creatures like this, this new, um, you know, the black lantern Aquaman calls upon the sea creatures and it actually mur like a bunch of sharks come out of the water and like murder his Atlantean people that are at his gravesite. <laughs> so I was like, Ooh, yeah, that's one of those things where I was mentioning earlier, like I kind of dislike it, but I also kind of think it, it, it's, yeah. Bruce, uh, I was gonna mix brutal and gruesome into a new word. It's gruesome. gruesome, and it and it shows that this is not a force to be reckoned with. So it's just mm. a whole bunch of sharks biting everybody. And fortunately, Mara escapes. Um, I, I would have been pretty sad if she was killed, but mm. she she does escape, and uh, Aqualad ends up getting murdered. So, and then. The other one takes place inside of the Watchtower when Firestorm. Uh, so there's two different characters that were Firestorm at one at one point. Four characters, yeah. technically, right? Um, yeah. So one of them, Ronnie Raymond, has died. And um, the new Firestorm, the, there's, there's two younger people, uh, Jason and then his girlfriend. Uh, her, her name is just Jen in this story. Yep. Um, so Ronnie Raymond is like, you know, at this point he's like he's like toying with Jason and he's trying to bring everyone in the Watchtower to life. And at one point, he he sucks Jason into him. So now, the the point of the Firestorm character is that there's one person that's at the wheel of the body who yes. has all the powers and the physical uh, ability to. Uh, deal with molecules and like kind of reconstructure the structure of things uh, or remake the structure of things and just a whole bunch of different powers but now Jason the younger character is inside of the risen firestorm's head and then you've got the girlfriend who's right there and the firestorm he's like he's like all right like give me the formula for table salt or whatever and like jason is like trying to stop it because he can't get out of the body and he knows that his girlfriend's gonna die and so unfortunately like 
the firestorm has trapped his girlfriend and turns her into salt <laughs> because of what he he like takes the formula out of Jason's head and so it's kind of like his his fault but I thought that was that was pretty crazy um, that's a that's pretty a sad, dark yeah yeah that's sad way to die your whole body is just reconstructed into salt <laughs> I mean I guess it is called blackest night for a reason definitely like, definitely yeah. And it's important to have that kind of silver lining and that light spot at the end. So mm. this this story definitely does have that. Like I said, all the white lantern, all the white lanterns bring people back to life, um, mm. including Jen. And uh, Dead Man, <laughs> Dead Man actually comes back to life too, which is interesting because How does that work? The point of his character is that he's yeah. dead. <laughs> so, um, uh, and. The last thing I didn't like, which was kind of just like me being me, because um, Batman is one of my favorite comic is my is my favorite comic book character. His character was underutilized significantly. Um, yes, but so like it obviously opens up with Batman; he's dead, and hmm. the main one of the main villains, kind of like the the underling to the guy necron yeah. um so and i'm not going to be able to remember his name um yeah, I'm yeah not gonna, i, I uh, know uh, black hand about. black hand okay so black hand actually take takes bruce wayne's skull so so and, and he's like walking around with batman's skull trying to uh, I think he tries to get him to his costume or something. So, yeah, isn't there a reason for that though? I thought there was a reason that he was underutilized. Like, cause they they like have him in another, like, have him come back in a different story or something. I'm not sure. He does come back like briefly in this story, but like mm -hmm. then then the Black Hand is like, okay, I don't need you anymore, so he just turns into bones again. <laughs> so okay. Um. Yeah, so his 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 skeleton is utilized, but his uh, it, it himself as a character is not, and so that's just me being yeah. complaining. But you can't you can't have Batman in every story. Sadly, no. Sadly, no. Um, so I really love this one. I'm definitely gonna read it again. Uh, a lot of themes of darkness and light, and just positivity in in a time of darkness. So that's that's something that's pretty important, especially in this time. A lot of people are out Definitely. there struggling, whether they're affected by COVID and or they're not allowed to go outside and see their families. And uh, it's just, you know, it's important for everybody to find the positivity where it seems like there is none. So, yeah, got to find your hope. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? That's it's it's good. not it's not ten out of ten only because Batman's character was underutilized. <laughs> so you know what we should do, Greg? We should swap. Should we do? Swap. So like I'll, I'll I'll read Blackest Night. I did I read it once a long time ago, and you read Identity Crisis, and we can kind of not go as in depth because we we've already did that here, but maybe give just like brief thoughts from each other's the the yeah, the comic books expensive. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think that's something that we should maybe do outside of this podcast. But what I what I had only because of what you were saying, we both just yeah. went in, into it in depth. But yeah. I wanted to maybe talk about what we want to read in the future when we do this again in uh, in five episodes. Um, yep. <laughs> I think that I want to revisit the Long Halloween Batman storyline because I've read that uh, twice. I think when I was younger, and it's been about like. It's probably been a good like five years, maybe since I read it. Four years. Um, and the new Batman film, starring Robert Pattinson, and directed by Matt Reeves, is loosely, probably, most likely going to be based on that story. So oh, hell. it would be a good idea to to re go over that one because it's one of the most famous. Um, I think for me, I'd probably want to revisit Infinite Crisis because that is that actually s s shortly follows Identity Crisis, and um, it's just been a while since I've read it. It's 
really good. It deals with um, I remember it dealt with some some interesting concepts because it, it ties back to Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is kind of like the ADBC mark for comics, or at least DC comics, where a lot of a lot of things changed. Mm. Um, but so it ties back a... to the... sorry. Go ahead. It, it it ties back to that point, and it uh, it brings back some old faces that haven't been seen in a long while. And uh, has an interesting, uh, interesting concept. So that, I think it's the one I'd probably want to hit up next. Cool. I have a copy of that on my bookshelf. If you'd like to borrow it, I actually have a copy of it on my bookshelf. Oh, very good. Thank you for the offer, my friend. Sure. Much appreciated. And so to to finish up before we get out of here, uh, because I've known you for so long. I thought it would be appropriate to ask, come up with three questions that each of us can ask each other, kind of as like a friendship quiz, if you think about it, to see how well we know each other. Okay. Um, so I have three questions here. You probably have a few questions in front of you. I do. Um, why don't we just go back and forth one at a time, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll do those, all right? It sounds so, like a very good plan. I'm going to start off with an easy one for you. Okay. Which easy pop one? yeah. Which pop culture character have I been doodling on my homework pages and notes since the second grade? Uh, oh, since only the second grade? <laughs> I think so. I don't know if in first grade I knew he existed, maybe. Wow. I mean, it's it's the guy you're talking about. It's the reason that Blackest Night only got a 9 out of 10. It's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> ding ding ding. Very good. It's Batman, correct. Yeah, uh, I, I think my my uh, if I ever do get around to working for DC, my submission or commission to get them to realize what kind of talent I have is, is my my perfect image of Batman. That's that's he, a life He has goal. been perfecting this. For, he, he's he's not joking. He has been perfecting this since the second grade. <laughs> I like he he can draw Batman so well. When we were in, I, I just remember when we were in high school together. I'd look over and he'd be taking notes. We'd, well, we'd both be taking notes, but like just in the margins of all his papers, there'd just be Batman. That's probably why you ended up. At least up... A, a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> just different head shapes. Only the head. Yo. And that's probably why you got the better grades than I oh, did. Oh, probably. <laughs> but you might, I think you might have gotten more out of high school than I did. I think I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. Um, wow. Here's to hoping. Here's One to day. hoping, indeed. All right, what do you got for me? Uh, on the on the question of comic books, uh, I want to know: do Do you know who my favorite comic book character is? And uh, what my favorite comic book is, because they're 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 tied together. I'll give you a hint there. Is that two and one? That is two and one. I I'm cheating. Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, I think I'm gonna get one of them right and probably the other one wrong, or both of them wrong. And if we get these questions wrong, it doesn't mean that we are not. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're not one of each other's best friends. It just means that we, we uh, still got more to learn about each other. Still got more to learn about each other, and it's kind of early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm gonna go with superman oh uh, yep you got that all right got that and i'm going to go with i actually don't remember what it's called um is it doomsday like is it the superman doomsday story uh, dude, right on again it's death <laughs> of superman death of superman two Good. out of two right there even with the cheating question perfect uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah nice as much as uh as much as greg's like batman I, I I love Superman. I cannot draw him as well. I am not an artist like Greg. I, I'm sad to say. You're the mind. But you're the mind behind our uh, I, our, I have, our superpower duo. I I got a good mind, but I got bad hands. That's all I got to say. But uh, Superman is one of my favorites. I know it's kind of a, a classic, maybe overused, but I really do like kind of the lawful good, uh, shining, shining knight who always you know does the right thing even in the hard situations and i think 
uh, Death of Superman particularly shows that because uh, it, it's just cool to see him without his powers but still being a hero. Yeah. Uh, and I, I appreciate about Superman. That's a good one. And I think the um, couple, this is just like a few films that kind of took inspiration from that one and like some animated movies yeah. that were taken inspiration from that. So it's a very significant story in his, obviously his, uh, the mythos of the character. And just honestly, one of the best stories I've ever, comic book stories I've ever read. So if you want a good one. It's four volumes. Well, technically five, but the fifth one is kind of an add-on. But um, it's very, very good. Okay. Uh, what you got next for me, Greg? So, which fantasy story? Uh, that's <laughs> probably a giveaway. Have I only seen the film rendition of? So, oh, uh, Lord of the Rings. Correct. Still yeah. haven't. Still haven't fully read a book. I sent you the audiobooks, my bro. You did. You did send me the audiobooks. They're <laughs> they're in a Google Drive format, I think, right? Yeah, you just gotta download them. Use uh, well, I think f free audiobook player or smart audiobook player. I think maybe it's called. Okay. Use a, uh, we can talk about that after the podcast. Sure. But, uh on that note, uh, name uh, can you name a historical figure that I'd want to go out to dinner with or like get a meal with? <laughs> <laughs> I swear I had this written down before. Oh my god. A historical figure that you had, would want to go out to dinner with. Yeah. Just to like have a meal with. You get, you get to talk to. Living or dead. Living or dead, so this per <laughs> this person can still be alive. Well, th oh, there's man. like multiple answers to this one. Multiple this isn't answers. like okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Let's see. That makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Actually, I don't think I don't. You wouldn't want to go out to dinner with Abraham. It wasn't someone I was thinking of. Like, I guess, I mean, don't go wrong. If I had the opportunity to go out to dinner with Abraham Lincoln, I would definitely take it. Here, I'll, but, give, I'll, get, a sec I'll, I'll get a second one. Give, yeah, give me a second one. Uh, George Washington. Yes. George All Washington right. is someone I would definitely go out to dinner with. All right. <laughs> George Washington is one of my, my favorite historical figures. Who else were you thinking of? Uh, Benedict Arnold. <laughs> no. no, not Benedict Arnold. I mean, J.R. Tolkien would definitely be up there. J.R.R. Tolkien oh, or C.S. Nice. Lewis. Um, uh, who is the fourth? I had a fourth one. Oh, it'll come to me. But George was... Washington is probably the, the big one. Oh, Ben or... Franklin. What about Ben Franklin? Ben Franklin, I'd want to I'd wanna go out to dinner with, especially uh, if it was a, a later in life version of him. So I'd be interested to hear about his experiences. Yeah. We don't have to get too into it, but he was apparently like a, a freaky dude sometimes. He had some... Yeah, he's an interesting fellow, um, to say the least. He's I smart, he... for sure, and he created or curated electricity or whatever, but he... Yeah. Um... I guess he used to take air baths where he'd just sit naked in front of a window. Wow. But I guess apparently that was also a common thing to do in those days, or at least a combination. So, interesting. Well, yeah, interesting fellow. Interesting fellow. I have a one lot of scandals, but sorry. Yeah, pretty scandalous, dude. What's your, what's your your last question for me, Greg? I have one more. This is this this. Uh, I saved the hardest one for last. This is okay. um, this is something that has happened in our life. Um, okay. An, an event in our life together uh, that has occurred in the past. Um, do you remember when you and I went to uh, go swimming with your mom at one of your mom's friend's pool? Yes, I remember that. Okay. So where did I get stung by a bee on that day? Uh, I remember we were on a hill. Are you talking about where on you? Well, yeah, where on me? Where did I get stung? Uh, was it on the nose? I want to say it was, like, close to the nose. 
Close, very close, very close. Where was it? I don't. It was on the lip. Oh, right on the lip. Yeah, I remember that day. I felt so bad. So, Greg here does what you're supposed to do when there's a bee. You're supposed to just like ignore it and not like bother it, and it's supposed to ignore it. me. I I just take off running, and I'm pretty you... sure I'm the one who agitated it so that it stung Greg. Yeah, I think you were freaking out and like jumped into the pool and then splashing water everywhere. And then that was just zooming around. And then obviously, like, I think we were both, what, like, 10, we were in like, like 10, L, yeah. We were in elementary even, school. I don't even know. Maybe 11. Um, yeah. And I was just, I was freaking out because you were freaking out. So, <laughs> and then, uh, your mom like your mom like tried to put like dirt on my lip or something to to make it feel better, but I don't know God if it bless felt her better. Soul. <laughs> <laughs> I love your mom. She um, always means well. I'll, yes. I'll give her that. <laughs> yes. Mom, if you listen to this, I do love you. I, I really love you. Couldn't have asked for a better mom. <laughs> Same to my mother. Okay. Uh, I, I, guess, I don't know. If this one you, you, depends on if you've heard my um, rant or not, which I feel like you might have. There's a good chance. But definitely, I saved the hardest one for last. What would be my preferred method of execution? If I had to get executed and I could choose, what would be my preferred method? Prefer So you, you are being yeah. executed. I'm the one being executed. Executed, I mean, um, not electrocuted. Um, that's an interesting because uh, there's a few different ones that I could think of for you. Um, can I ask you a question about your question? Yeah, go for it. Is this uh, a form of capital punishment that's used in? our society today uh yes and no okay um is it uh, you would i mean I, you wouldn't see it given to a civilian let's put it that way okay uh, is it a firing squad yeah <laughs> <laughs> right, i feel like that, the last court gave it away but if I had to well, get killed, I want to die on my feet and quickly. So. I knew, yeah, I knew that. I, I knew that that's what it was. I mean, I said electrocuted instead of executed in the beginning because yeah. I was thinking of electric chair. But yeah. As soon as I said that, I was like, no, it's probably firing squad because yeah. I do. I do remember you ranting about that at some point. It's just yeah. a quick. It's a quick way to go. It's quick and like it's on your feet. Like I just. If I'm going to get executed, I want to be on my feet. I want to be able to, like, look the people in the eye. Actually, I don't think – I don't know how quick it is because you are you don't die at once because it's, like, it's like six people in a line shooting you. So you probably die, like, maybe two or three seconds into it. But, like, there, there's a few seconds where you're just getting bombarded yeah, by bullets. Yeah, but, like, two or three seconds isn't bad. I mean, even if you get decapitated, you're still alive for, like, three, four seconds before you go. <laughs> So like, I feel like two, three seconds. I feel like that's a pretty quick, all things considered. All right. So. Well, Joshua, thank you very much for coming on the podcast with me today. Greg, thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. It was a blast. You know, maybe not everyone that is listening to this podcast is as avid comic book connoisseurs as we are, but one of the things that I want to do with this platform is use it to express some things that I'm interested in, as well as learn about things that I'm not interested in. So I, I, I want to have variety and I think yeah. it's important. So, and you know what, Greg, like maybe comic books isn't for everybody. I mean, it's not everyone's cup of tea. That is all right, but it's, always good to get different perspectives and to try and understand other people and you know maybe for some people it's just a chance to try and understand their nerdy friends for sure that's a good way to out that's a good outlook all right buddy thank you i hope you have a wonderful day 
I hope you do too, right. Greg. Thanks again for having me, and I will. I'll talk to you later, bro. Alrighty. Bye bye.